We begin the Gemara today towards the bottom of Daf Tzadik Amit Beis, beginning of the line, six lines from the bottom of the page where it says, Vahani Tanoi Kihani Tanoi. The Gemara here is discussing the halacha of Ksubas Benin Dichrin. The halacha of Ksubas Benin Dichrin is when a woman passes away before her husband. So in such a case, she doesn't actually ever get her Ksuba. But the husband is the one that gets her Ksuba, and that includes also any properties that she brought into the marriage. And then when the husband passes away, if he was married to two wives, the children of each one of the wives that passed away before him, their children now get that amount of Ksuba from their mother. That's what's called Ksubas Benin mm-hmm. And after you distribute that amount of Ksuba for them, then you can divide the rest of the inheritance equally. And one of the conditions for this, which is relevant here in the Gemara, we're going to learn it soon in the Gemara and then later in the Mishnah, is that we only apply this deal of Ksubas Benin in a case where there is at least one dinner that's a remainder that's left over that you can divide equally. If you can't divide any of the inheritance equally after, after after they divide the ksuba for the two uh, the children of the two mothers if there's no leftovers then you cannot give each one of the children of their mother the ksuba for the, for the, for the amount of their mother there has to be leftovers at least a dinner to divide equally between them okay so now here the case we're speaking about in the gemara is that there's one this, again, a person was married to two wives. One of his wives passed away before the, the husband passed away. The other one passed away after the husband passed away. So what's the difference? The one that passed away before, she never really gets a ksuba. Who gets the ksuba? The, the, the father is the one that gets the ksuba. And then the children in the inheritance, they want to get the ksubas benin dechen. But when it comes to the one that passed away, after the father passed away, she gets a real ksuba. She's owed the ksuba from the husband, and now her children inherit the ksuba from her, from their mother directly. So therefore, in such a case, the Gemara has a discussion before, the Gemara brought a machleikis before, between Benanas and Rabakive, whether we apply ksubas bin indichlan in such a case or not. So here the Gemara is going to bring another braise, where it seems like that there's other tanoim that argue in the same exact case. Hani tanoi, the two tanoim we brought before, the bananas and Rabbi Kiva that argue about this, Kihani Tanoi. It's like these Tanoim here in the following Braise. The Tanya, because we learned in Abraise, Nosa Esarishoina Umesa. A person marries his first wife and she passed away. So she passed away before him. So now she's not getting any Ksuba. The husband Yarshans everything. And then for the children, there would be the Ksubas Benin Dechren that they want to take from what the father got from their mother's Ksuba. Now, Nosa Sashni has a second wife, Umesu. And he died before the wife. So now her children, she or her children, are getting a ksuba. So in such a case, the Tanakhama says, Boen b'ne'er sholzu la'acha misiv anoitling ksubas iman. The ones that their mother died after the father passed away, and they have rights to collect from their mother directly. The ksuba, they take their ksuba, and the rest of the inheritance is divided equally. The other children of the other wife, that passed away before the husband passed away, they don't have any special rights to get the Ksubas Benedichinim, we divide the inheritance equally. So basically the Tanakhama is saying in such a case, because we don't apply Ksubas Benedichinim to both of the children of both of the mothers, so over here we don't apply Ksubas Benedichinim for one wife when it's not for the other. So therefore we're going to divide the Yerusha equally after they get the Ksuba that they deserve directly from their mother. Abshemin Aymer, Abshemin says, no, we do apply the deal of Ksubas bin Indichrin here. Im yesh maisa dinner, if there is at least a remainder of a dinner, like I mentioned before, after you're going to give each one of the children from their mother the special amount from the Ksuba of their mother, there has to be at least a remainder of one dinner to now divide equally between them, to, to fulfill the Yerushim and Atayre. If there's going to be a remainder of a dinner, then Eilin Ksubas Iman, the Eilin Ksubas Iman. So each one of them is going to get the Ksuba of their mother. mother. The, one of them, the, the children of one wife, get directly from their mother because the mother actually deserves the Ksuba. And the other ones get it from the father because of the deal of Ksubas bin Indichan that they're supposed to get the amount of their mother's Ksuba. Vim lav, and if you don't have the remainder of a dinner, chalkim b'shava. So then, the halacha always is that you have to divide everything equally. 
So you see, here you see, so the Gemara says, my love, Balka Miflugi. It seems like that here, the argument between the Tanakam and Rab Shimon is like we said before. Mar Sovar. So Rab Shimon's opinion is, Achas Bachayav, Achas Bamaisai. If one wife passed away in the husband's lifetime, and one wife passed away after he passed away. So therefore, one, for one mother, there's a regular Ksuba. And only for the other one, is there not a ksuba, but this ksuba is benin dichrin. So it's even in such a case, yesh len ksuba is benin dichrin. The children of one wife will get their ksuba is benin dichrin from the father. So the other one, one is a regular ksuba. Maybe. Correct. So even though one is getting a regular ksuba and the other ones, only the children of one mother are getting ksuba is benin dichrin, we still apply this halach of ksuba is benin dichrin. Umar Savar, but the other opinion is that Tanakhama says, Achas Bachaya, Achas B'Maisai, in such a situation, when one passed away in the husband's lifetime and one passed away after he passed away, so Eilam Ksubas bin Indichrin. We don't apply the halach of Ksubas bin Indichrin because over here, the Gemara before explained, there can be some kind of a fight here because the children that are not getting this special amount of Ksubas bin Indichrin will say, Why, when it comes to the father's inheritance, are you better than us? Why are you getting special amount? When it comes to the amount that we're getting for the ksuba from our mother, that's not something we're getting from our father. We're getting this directly from our mother. But now when it comes to the inheritance of the father, why are you getting a special amount based on what your father got from your mother, and why should we just get the, the regular amount? But the, the, ksuba, the regular ksuba and the ksuba is the different amount? No, 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 not, uh, not necessarily. Not, not necessarily. Okay. It could be the same amount. Oh. But the point is, when it comes to the Yerusha of the father, so the children that are getting their mother's ksuba say that as far as the father's Yerusha is concerned, we should all be equal. Oh, right. Why should you be different? So therefore, according to the Tanakhama, in such a case, there's no Ksubas bin Indichrin. So the Gemara says, Loi, not necessarily is that the argument here. The Kulalme, both the Tanakhama and Rav Shimin, everybody agrees, Achas b'chayo v'achas b'moysa. In this case, when one wife passed away in the husband's lifetime, one passed away after he passed away, so only one of them have Ksubas bin Indichrin, and the other one is getting the Ksuba directly from the mother. Yeshleng Ksubas bin Indichrin. But we still give the children of one wife the Ksubas bin Dechrin. So what is then the argument between the Tanakhama and Rab Shimon? So the Gemara continues, Vahacha over here, the argument is about something else. As I mentioned before, and as you see here in the words of Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon says we only apply the Ksubas bin Dechrin that the children get their special amount that the father got from the mother's Ksuba if there's a remainder at least of a dinner that could be divided equally. But now the question is, what qualifies as a remainder of that dinner? So the Gemara says, Here, what they're arguing is, whether you need a dinner, that that remainder of a dinner should be from karka, from an actual property, a piece of land. So the opinion of the Tanakhama is, Mikakoi in metal Taliloi. Only if you have a remainder of a dinner that's from karka, from a land, then you say that they can divide ksubas bin indichrin. But if the remainder of a dinner is metaltalin, it's just movable items, it's not the same, it's not the same kind of a value, and it's not the same stability as a piece of karka, so then like, that's not a remainder that we can say that we have still something to divide equally amongst them. It's only metaltalin, it's not a significant. Omar Sovar, and on this, Rab Shimon comes to say, and he holds, I feel a metaltli, as long as there's a remainder of a dinner, any remainder, even if it's just metaltlin, any valuables, so that's enough that we can now give each one the ksubas benedichlin, and we have the leftover for this to, to divide equally, even if it's just metaltlin. <coughs> okay, so the Gemara asks on this pshat, Umi, Matzis Amr Sachi. Can you say that this is Rab Shimon's opinion? That even if there's just a dinner of valuables, metaltalin, that's enough to, to divide between them equally. But what now? And it says in the Mishnah, this is the next Mishnah we're about to learn over here on this Amad. So there Rab Shimon clearly says, Rab Shimon Oimeh, Even if the remainder of a dinner that's there in order for them to divide equally is from properties that ain't lem which there's no responsibility on them. This, this, this is an expression that refers to metaltalin, valuables, movable items that you can take from here to there and it could disappear. Ain't and klum, that's worthless. Achi heisham the chosim shiyeshlam achrayis. There has to be a remainder of a dinner and it has to be of properties that there's responsibility over them, meaning karka. It has to be something more significant that's here, that's not going anywhere. So clearly, Rab Shimon holds that it has to be a dinner of karka. How could you say that Rab Shimon is coming to say that even a dinner of metaltalin would be good enough? 
Again, Achiyeh Shem Nechassim Shesh Lamachrais Yeser Al Beis Ksubis Dinner More than the two Ksubis that the Ksubis Ben in Dichren that each one of the children are collecting. There has to be at least more a dinner, but it has to be from the Chassim Shesh Lamachrais, which is Karka. So the Gemara changes the Pshat of the Machlokes. Ella, rather, maybe we could say that the understanding of the Machlokes between the Tanakam and Rabshimon is as follows. What they're arguing about is there is a remainder of the value of a dinner and maybe even of karka that's here that the father that left after after they finished dividing the ksubas bin and there's still a remainder. But it's mishabdi. Mishabdi means it's owed to somebody. There's a balchayv that wants to collect this money. It's, it's not, so it's, it's there, but it's going to be paid to somebody else. They're not going to actually divide it amongst themselves. So kamiflugi, this is what they're arguing about. Mar so the Tanakhama says, If there's a, a remainder of a property, at least in the value of a dinner, and it's, it's free and clear, they could divide it between themselves. So then, that's a remainder that we say that they're going to be dividing the Ksubas bin and Dichrin, and then they divide this remainder equally. But if it's a remainder which is Meshubah to somebody, that it's owed to someone, so then that's not counted as a remainder. But Rav Shemit comes to say, Even if the remainder of a dinner is going to be collected by somebody else, that counts as a remainder. On this pshat, but he the, the words that Rav Shemin chooses. The words of Rav Shemin does not fit with this pshat. Is Rav Shemin coming to be lenient? Or is Rab Shimon coming to be more stringent here? According to the Pshat that the Gemara is saying now, Rab Shimon is coming to be more lenient. Rab Shimon is saying, even if the remainder is money or a karka, that is, that somebody else is going to be collecting, that's sufficient to say that there's a remainder. He's coming to be lenient, but it doesn't fit into the words of Rab Shimon. Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon says, Im yesh sham maisa dinner. If you're going to have a leftover of a dinner, if makes it sound like that he's being more stringent, that not in every case will the le- remainder of a dinner qualify. Only in a specific case, if. That's, what, that's the term he uses. So Gemara says, if he's actually coming to be more lenient, the expression he should have said is, Kivin he should have said in a, more, in a more lenient expression, since, since there's even this kind of a dinner, which is a property that someone else is going to collect, that's good enough, that's okay. Not using the term in if. On the contrary, you should say since. Since th- th- this as well, as well is also good enough. So why does he use an expression that shows that he's being more stringent? So therefore the Gemara now tries another pshat here. Elo, maybe we can say as follows. What they're arguing about is if there's a remainder. After they split the Ksubas bin and now there's a remainder, but it's less than a dinner. Masovar dinnerim pachis bidinner loy. Tanakama says there has to be a remainder of a dinner to divide equally, but not less than a dinner. Masova, and Abshim's opinion is, I feel a pachis medinner. Even if there's a remainder less of a dinner, they can rely on that, that they're relying that they're dividing that equally, and that, that's enough less than a dinner. But the Gemara right away asks, for Rapshim and dinner karma. Rapshim clearly said that there has to be a remainder of a dinner. This is also besides, besides the question the Gemara asked before, that in the Lashon of Rav Shimon, it's clear that it's coming to be more lenient. Or actually, again, it's, it's in the Lashon of Rav Shimon, it's clear that it's coming to be more stringent. Now the Gemara says, and this was really the main point that the Gemara wanted to say, maybe I'll switch the opinions that we just said over here, that the Tanakama is the one that says that even if there's a remainder less than a dinner, that's good enough. And Rav Shimon is coming to be more stringent and saying that there has to be remainder only of a dinner. But the Gemara says, we have a Mishnah. Again, the next mission that we're about to learn over here, Tanakama de Masnisin Nami Dinah Kamar. In the Mishnah, the Tanakama clearly says that the remainder has to be a dinner. So there can't, there's no argument about this. There's no argument. Nobody says that less than a dinner of a remainder is good enough. Ella, therefore the Gemara says, going back to the two Pshatim that are brought before. Kehanoch tre lishnoi kamoi. We can explain the Machlaikis of the Tanakama and Rab Shimon, like the two versions that we had before. And the two versions again were either they're arguing about whether a dinner of metaltalin is good enough, qualifies for a remainder, or they're arguing about a dinner of Meshabdi. When there's a leftovers, but that leftovers is owed to somebody, it's going to be collected by somebody else. Is does that qualify? And the Epoch, and I have to switch the opinions from the way we said it before. 
Before the Gemara presented it as, Rab Shimon is the one that's more lenient. Rab Shimon is the one that says that Mataltalin is good enough, Meshavdi is good enough. But as the Gemara pointed out, in the words of Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon is coming to be more stringent. So therefore, we're going to switch the opinions. Rab Shimon is the one that's saying that it has to be Karka and it has to be Bnei Chayrin. And it fits into the words of Rab Shimon. Okay, now the Gemara brings the actual halacha. Amma Mazutra Mishmei, the Rav Pope. Rav Mazutra said in the name of Rav Pope regarding what we discussed in this sugya, what's the halacha? Hilchase. So first of all, one halacha is achas b'chayev achas b'maysa. In a situation where you had the two wives and one passed away in the husband's lifetime, one passed away after the husband passed away, again, which means that one is getting the ksuba directly from the mother, because they passed away before the husband, and the other one is getting the ksuba through the father. The ksuba has been in dichren. This deal of ksuba has been in dichren. So, do you apply ksuba has been in dichren when only the children of one mother are getting it? So, the halacha is yes, lang ksuba has been in dichren. We do apply the halacha of ksuba has been in dichren in this case. That's one halacha, Mazutra said. Another halacha he said, Uksube nasis meisel chaverta. The Gemara earlier on in the Tzadik explained that when we say this halacha that we're discussing here, that there has to be a remainder. After you divide the Ksubes ben there has to be a remainder that could be divided equally amongst all the Yarshim. Now, the fact that the children of the other wife are getting their Ksuba directly from the mother, that payment of that Ksuba qualifies to be a remainder that's being divided equally because really that's money or that's properties that should be split amongst them equally but it's owed to the ksuba and therefore it's being collected for the ksuba so that money that's collected for the ksuba qualifies to be a remainder and therefore you could give the ksuba's brindichin those are the two halachas that Mazutra said in the name of Rav Papa so the Gemara will ask, why did he have to spell out both of these halachas? Now, Bish, Loime, it's understood. Iyashminon, if you would just tell me the halacha, that achas b'chayev, achas b'moyse, yeshleng, subas b'nin dichrin, that in the case where only one wife, the children of one wife, are collecting subas b'nin dichrin, I still give it to them. And he would not tell me the other halacha that ksube nasis meisel chaverta that we could consider the collection of the ksube those that are collecting the ksube directly from their mother, which that we could consider that to be the leftovers. If he wouldn't tell me that halacha, so have a minute, then I, I would think to say, in eloi like that you have to have. A, a, an additional uh, uh, leftover of a dinner besides the properties that are being collected for the ksuba you have to have an additional dinner and if not not so it's necessary to teach me both of these halachas you can't just tell me the halacha that this ksuba has been in dikhrim when only one of the children are taking Ella, but how about the reverse lishmi inon why wouldn't mazutra tell us the halacha just one halacha that in a situation where you have one that's taking the ksubas benindichrin and then the other one is getting the ksuba directly from their mother that the ksuba that's being collected from their mother that's considered to be the leftovers that now the other children of the other mother can get the ksubas benindichrin why wouldn't it just teach that alacha and automatically I would know that this whole alacha only applies in a case Case where you have children of one mother that are getting the ksubas bin dichrin, and the children of the other mother are taking the ksuba directly from their mother. That's the only time when this concept applies that I could say that the collection of the ksuba serves as a remainder, is considered to be the remainder after the ksubas bin dichrin that the children of the other mother are collecting. So with just by saying this halacha, I would know that we apply ksubas bin dichren even when only the children of one wife are collecting it. Why does he have to spell out that halacha separately? So the Gemara explains, No, nope. if it would only say this halacha, that the remainder of the ksuba is considered to be the, um, again, the remainder which is being used to collect for the ksuba, that's considered to be a remainder after the ksubas bin dichren, if we would only say that aloha, <coughs> sorry, hava mina, then I would think as follows that there's a case where, here the Gemara brings a case, let's see, kagoin shenasa shalish nashim, if it would be a case where a person is married to three wives, umeisu shtayim b'chayev, and two of the wives passed away before the, the husband died, in the husband's lifetime. So in such a case, the children of both of these wives are collecting not a ksuba from their mother, because the mother died when the father was still alive. Mm -hmm. They're collecting the ksubas bin after the father dies. 
Then the Achas Moisai. Then the third wife passed away after the the the. the Again, yeah, the third wife passed away after the husband passed away. Now, the children of the third wife, they're the ones that are getting the Ksubba directly from their mother. But the case here is, This third wife that passed away after the father passed away, after the husband passed away, you let this Nekevahi. She only has a daughter, which is a Nekeva. She doesn't have any sons that are part of the Yerusha. She just has a, a, a daughter, which is a Nekeva. Velav bas Yerushi, so she's not part of the Yerusha over here at all. So what's going to be the Allah in such a case? In, su- in such a case, there's really no reason why not to apply the halacha of Ksubas benin Dichrin. As I mentioned before, the only reason why in a case where there are children of one wife that are taking the Ksubas benin Dichrin and the children of the other wife are not taking the Ksubas benin Dichrin, the reason why maybe you should say not to apply the Ksubas benin Dichrin in such a case is because there'll be an, an argument about this. Because the children of one wife are going to say, why are you getting more than us from the father? But over here in this case, Children of two of the wives, both of them are getting equally the ksubas bin indichrin, the special amount of the ksubas for their, for their mother, from their mother. <coughs> Sorry. Now the fact that there is a third wife here that has a daughter that's, that, that, that's not getting that ksubas bin indichrin, but the, the child of that wife is, is a nekeva. She has no tainus. She's not even part of this whole Yerusha here. She's not going to come and fight and say, why are you getting more of a Yerusha than me? She's not part of the Yerusha at all. Mm-hmm. The children of the two wives that are yarshining are both equally getting Subas bin Dichrin. So in such a case, you could apply the halacha that the collection of the ksuba of the daughter of the third wife is going to be qualifying as a remainder. So that halacha would apply over here. But I would not know the chiddish that when one takes ksubas bin indichrin and when one does not, that we still say that you give ksubas bin indichrin. Because in this case, there's no reason for a fight at all. As the Gemara concludes, Aval, achas achas If it would be a case where one wife passed away in the husband's lifetime, one wife passed away after he passed away. So again, one is getting the Ksubas bin Dichr and one is not. And the one that passed away after the husband, so therefore they're getting the Ksubas from their mother, mother, they're not getting Ksubas bin Dichr and Yaleh Zachar, there's a Zachar, there's a child that's, that's Yarshining here. So maybe they, I should be afraid that there'll be a fight here. This Zachar is going to say, why are you getting more of Yerusha from the father than me? I'm collecting the silver from my mother. You're not collecting the silver from your mother. You're collecting the silver from the father. So regarding the Yiddish of the father, why are you getting more than me? So that's still a chiddush that I would not know. Kamash Malan, that's why you have to say separately this halacha, that even in this case, we do still give the ksubas benin dechrin to this one child, for this child from this one wife. Okay, we continue now. This is another mission here, which we'll discuss this halacha of ksubas benin dechrin, and it'll mainly focus on this point that I said before, we only give the special Yerusha of Ksubas bin Indichrin in a situation where there is a remainder after you divide a special amount that each one should be able to divide equally the inheritance. Misha Yenas, Ishtay Nosh, persons married to two wives, Umeisu, and they both passed away. First, Vachakach Meisu, and then the husband passed away. The Yisayimim of Akshin Ksubas Iman. And now the Yisayimim of both of these wives are requesting to get paid the Ksuba of their mother. This is the Ksubas bin Indichin. They want to have that special amount that the father got from their mother. Vein Shom Alex Shtek Subais and the inheritance. There's only enough to distribute and to divide the two special Ksubas for these children, and there's no leftovers. Bishave, sorry, Shtek Subas that is, but there's no leftovers. So what do you do? Chelkin Bishave. So now the whole Allah of Ksubas bin Indichrin does not apply, there's no remainder here, so you divide equally. Dinner, if there's at least one dinner that's left over to divide between them equally, so so then the children of each mother can get a special amount for their mother's ksube, and then the rest you divide equally, which is the dinner. Now, what happens in Omri Yusayimim? The Yusayimim do want to get a special amount from their mother's ksuba. And they see that there won't be any remainder to divide equally, so they're not going to get it. So what do they do? The Yusayimim say, Anachnu avinu yafedine. We consider the value of our father's properties to be higher than the market value is. And therefore, for us, we consider it to be higher. So there will be a remainder of a dinner. They're saying this in order that they should have the ability to get the special amount of the ksuba of their mother. 
Ain't showing the land, we don't listen to them. Rather, what we do is El Shamanis and Achasim Bebezin. The properties are evaluated in Bezin according to the market value, and if there's a remainder, they get, and if not, not. If there are properties, right now there is no remainder that there would be that the father actually has or that they are inheriting from their father, but there's beroi. There's properties that they could be getting, let's say, from their father's father that's still alive, and when he passes away, then they will be getting it. This is not considered like something that's here already now as a remainder that they should be able to get the special silver from their mother. Rabshim says regarding this remainder of a dinner, if there's a remainder of a dinner, but it's from the Chasm Shein Lamachrais, which as I said before, this is the Metaltalin, that's worthless. It has to be Achiyusham, the Chasim, Shiyeshla Machrais, Yeslash Teksubis dinner. There has to be the amount of a dinner from properties, from, from a piece of land which is which is here to stay. It's not going anywhere. That qualifies that there should be a remainder of a dinner. Tan Rabbana, we learned in the Braise. The Braise basically says the same Allah as the Mishnah, Lazu Elev or Lazu Chamish Meis. If you have the children of these two wives that want to collect a special amount from their mother's ksuba, now one of them, the ksuba of their mother was a thousand, and the other one, the ksuba was half, only five hundred. So he's going to get only half. So im yesham may said dinner. So again, like the Mishnah said, if there's a remainder of a dinner that then is going to be divided equally as the Yerusha, so then I say Elanoit and Ksuba Simon, the Elanoit and Ksuba Simon, each one of them will get the amount of their Ksuba. So one will get a thousand, and one will get five hundred. Vim lav, and if not, yachloiku b'shove. They're going to divide it equally. So as it says in the Shittim B'kibet says, the Chiddush of this Brayse that I did not say in the Mishnah is, when we say that the children get a special amount of their mother's ksuba, according to the Mishnah, you may have thought that what that means is that, let's say one, one mother had two children, the other one had ten children. So we're going to divide for the two children and for the ten children, they're going to get the ksuba of their mother, even though there's different numbers of children here, and the inheritance is not the same. In this Braise, it's saying, even if the actual ksuba itself is not the same amount, not only regarding the children, but the actual ksuba is half of the amount by one wife over the other wife. Still, I say that each one gets their special amount, as long as there's a remainder of a dinner afterwards, it could be divided equally. Okay, now the Gemara says as follows. Is what? Divided among the, the leftovers of the... Yes, the, the, right. So the Gemara says, Pshite, now, this would be obvious to us, Mirubin Vinismatu. If, when the father passed away, there was enough, there was a lot of properties, there was enough that there will be a remainder to re- divide equally between them. But then Vinismatu, later on, the market value of the properties went down, and now there isn't anything extra to divide. So, do we say that because in the beginning there was a remainder, so that they can divide the Ksubas bin and and get their special amount or not? Or we look at the present. Right now the value went down and there is no remainder. So, the Allah over there, it's obvious that Kfar Zachu, Behen, Yershin. The Yershin were already Zaycha in their special amount of the Ksuba of their mother because then when the father passed away there was a remainder and that's, that's the time that we go according to. If at that time there was a remainder, so they have the rights to collect their special amount from their mother. But if it was the reverse, that when the father passed away, there wasn't enough of a remainder to divide equally. But now, today there's more. Today you could, uh, you could divide extra. There is extra to divide equally. My, what's going to be the halacha here? Should I say I go according to when the father passed away? At the time that the father passed away, there was no extra. Or do I say, no, the fact is today there is. If today there is, so then... The whole point of why there has to be a remainder is because we want to still keep the Yerusha Minatayra in place to divide equally. So if today we could do the Yerusha Minatayra, so it's okay. Mm-hmm. So the Gemara brings now from an actual story when this, this happened and what the Psaktim was. Toshima, the Nixi, the Bey Bartzartzer. There was an individual by the name of Bey Bartzartzer that had this exact situation. He had two wives and he passed away and the children of the, of the wives that passed away before him wanted to collect the Ksubas binin Dichrin. So, Muatin v'nisrabu havu. So, when he passed away, there was not enough of a remainder to be divided equally. But then it became more. The, the, the value went up. And the Vasla came to Rav Amram. They asked Rav Amram, what's the Allah here? Amaluhu Rav Amram said, Zilu Paisinu. That you, you do have to go and give the one, if, the, if there's one of the children that have from one wife, from one of the wives, has a bigger ksuba, and therefore they want to collect extra more, their amount of their mother's ksuba, he says, yeah, you're going to have to give them the ksuba's been indichrin of their mother's ksuba. Even though when, they, when he passed away, there wasn't enough of a remainder, but since today there is, you do have to give it to them. 
So what happened? Loyashka the other Yarshim of the other mother didn't want to do this. They didn't listen. They just wanted to divide equally. Yeah, exactly. The one from the small Iksube. So they didn't listen. Amalohu sort of Amram said to them, Eloim if you're not gonna appease them, meaning if you're not gonna give the ones of the wife, the wife that have their large iksub, if you're not gonna give them, so then machin the I'm gonna hit you with a thorn that does not cause bleeding. That's a simple translation, which means I'm gonna put you in some kind of excommunication. He's trying to force them to fulfill the psakdin. And they weren't listening. So what did he do? Shadrinu lekamei the Rav Nachman. He sent them to Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman should pass him what the halacha here is. So Rav Nachman actually disagreed with Rav Amram. Rav Nachman passed and Amal lehen. Rav Amram said. Rav Nachman that is said. Kishem shemerubim v'nismat. Just like the halacha is that if in the beginning there was enough for a remainder to be divided equally, but now there's less and you don't have. Zachu behen yarshin. So I say that I go according to the time when the husband passed away, and if then there was enough, the each the yarshim of their ksuba of their mother are zayche. Kach so too muatim v'nisrabu. If in the beginning there wasn't enough, and therefore then you could not apply ksubas benedichre, and today there is zachu ben yarshin. So the, the yarshin are zayche that we, in other words, the, the zayche that we divide equally. Since at the time we always go according to the time when the husband passed away. If at that time there wasn't enough, we're going to divide it equally. Not like Rav Amram said. That was Rav Nachman's psakdin. Okay, here the Gemara is going to bring a bunch of different little stories with piske dinim that are connected to what we're discussing here and the mission that we learned. And it's going to get into a bunch of different cases as well. Simen, the Gemara first brings a simen for these different cases. Ela, Fomeya, Mitzvah, Biksuba. Yaakov, Zokov, Doisa, Bedvarim, Asikin. So, Ahu Gavra. There was an individual, Dava Maskebe Alpha Zuzi, that people were, someone was trying to collect from him a thousand Zuz. Havale Trea Padni, he owned two big, <coughs> nice houses or two palaces. Zavino, and he sold them. Chode Bechomishmei, Bechode Bechomishmei. He sold them both to one person. He sold one for 500 and the other one for another 500. So now the, the two together are the total amount of what he actually owed. Mm-hmm. Now, now comes the person that he owed him the money. So he comes to the buyer and he confiscated one of these palaces for the payment of his loan. He's, his loan was from before and therefore there's a lien on this, on this house, on this property. And he confiscated it for themselves. He came back again to confiscate the second palace to get the full payment. And one of them was 500, so he got half of the payment. Now he wanted to confiscate the second palace. So what did this person, what did this buyer do? He didn't want him to take away the second palace. So Shoko Alpha Zuzi, he took a payment of a thousand Zos and he went to the, uh, to the creditors that were collecting this money. And he said to them as follows, because like and he went to them and Amale he said as follows, Alpha Zuzi If for you, the first palace that you collected if you consider its value to be a thousand, not really in, in the market value, the market value was only 500. But basically what he's saying is for me, this first palace that you confiscated from me, for me, I really, really want this. It's very, very cherished to me. For me, it has a value of a thousand. If you're going to consider it also to be the value of a thousand and therefore really you got your full payment of a thousand from the first palace and therefore do not come and take the second one for any additional pay, payment, so then that's good. So then it finished. Don't come and collect the second one. So in other words, what this, what this person is basically saying is, let's not go according to the market value. Let's go according, I value it much more. And therefore, when you confiscated this for me, you got your full payment. But now he's telling them, Eloi, if you're not going to accept this, and therefore you consider it only to be half of the payment of, of, of 500, and therefore you want to collect more, you want to take the, the second palace from me. But what Shakal uh, Alpha Zuzi here, I have a thousand Zuz, take the thousand Zuz, Fistalik, and go away from here and give me back even the first palace and I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, I'll pay you the loan, I'll give you money. So he's offering them, instead of collecting from the lien of the properties that you had because of your loan, I'll pay you cash, I'll give you a thousand Zuz instead. Again, he, he's, he's all doing this based on the fact that he's trying to say that the lien that you have on the property, on the first property, I consider it to be in the value of a thousand Zuz. And therefore, consider that to be the full collection of your loan. And even if not, I'll give you a thousand zuz. That's, uh, that's what he's telling them. So now, because Gemara says, Rami Machame thought to say that this, this buyer can't come and say such a thing, that I consider it to be the value of a thousand zuz. 
This is what we learned in the Mishnah. If Yisayimim say, come and say, the Yisayimim say, when in the case of the Mishnah said, when there was no remainder to be divided equally, so therefore the Yisayimim say, we consider the properties of our father to be the value of a dinner. For us it is worth more. So you can't do that. We go according to the actual evaluation. The Bezim will evaluate the actual proper market value. So over here as well, this buyer can't say, for me, this palace that you collected is worth a thousand zoos, and therefore you should consider it to be already your full collection of the loan. And therefore leave me alone. Do not take the second one. You can't say that. Amalei Rave, so Rave comes and says, no, there's no comparison to our Mishnah. Me, Dami, how could you compare to our Mishnah? Hasa, Mislub, Seydele, Yasmi. In the case of our Mishnah, the reason why we don't allow the children of one of the wives to come and say, for us, it's worth more, is because they're going to cause a loss to the other Yisayimim. They're going to be taking extra, special amount for their mother's Ksubah. So they're causing a loss. So we can't, we have to go according to the market value. Hasa, Mislub, Seydele, over here, what kind of a loss is there going to be? If they're not going to accept this that he's saying, that to me it's worth double the price, so he's offering to pay them. Alpha Yav, Alpha Shakil. He's saying, look, you borrowed, the, 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 the guy borrowed from you, the, the seller borrowed from you $1,000. I'm paying you back now $1,000 or thousands of So therefore, they're not losing anything. So therefore, over here, if he says to them that I want you to consider this payment to be the, the, the full payment, even though the market value is actually less, but because they're not going to lose anything, he's offering to pay them the full amount, over here we accept this. Okay, so this, as, as the, the Rishonim explained, the, the basis of this machlaik is between Rav and Rami Bacham over here is, there's a lien, there's an actual lien on the properties that, that the, the buyer bought. The question is, does a buyer even have a right to go to the creditor and say, I'll pay you cash. Who is he to say, I'll pay you cash? The, maybe the creditor could say, I'm not interested in your cash. I have a lien on these properties. I want to get my full amount from the actual properties. So that, that's basically what Rami Bachama said. This that he's offering to pay cash is, is worthless. He, doesn't, he's, he, he can't offer this. But Rabbi says, true, there's a lien on the properties, but as long as he offers to give cash and there's no loss, so then there's no issue with the fact that he's saying that it has more of a value for him. Okay, but now the one has another question. Vitirfa bekama kasvina. What happens if the creditors do accept his offer? And, and they say, okay, we're going to consider the fact that we took one palace, for a thousand, for five, which is really worth $500. We're going to consider it to be worth double, $1,000. And therefore, we collect this. But now the question is tirfa. Tirfa means when a buyer that bought something and the, now the, the creditors went and confiscated from him, what happens? He goes back to the seller and he tells the seller, now you have to take responsibility for this and reimburse me for what I paid for this field. But the question is, how much tirfe, we, we write, Besden writes for the buyer a document for him to be able to go and collect from the seller. What amount do we write in this document? On one hand, the actual value of the, of the palace that was collected was 500. But on the other hand though, the creditors agreed to collect it in the value of a thousand. So now you sort of saved the seller the thousand dollars that he owed these creditors. So maybe you should write that he has the right, he has the right to collect now from the seller, the buyer that is, has the right to collect from the seller a thousand. So the Gemara brings him up like, it's Ravina Amab Alpha. Ravina says that you give him the right, you write a star tirf, it's called, the star that he can go now collect from the buyer, a thousand zuz, because the, the whole loan of a thousand zuz was paid up, and Ravavira says, no, we look at the actual value of the palace that he paid for it and was confiscated, and it was only 500. The Hilchase, the halacha is like Ravavira, which is Bechamish Meya. We only write that he can collect back from the, buyer, from the seller. Again, the buyer could only collect from the seller 500 zos, not more. The Gemara now brings another story, which is basically identical to this story. Ahogavra, there was an individual that he owed a thousand, he owed a hundred. Here is I only owed a hundred zos. Havale trekatini de ara, he had two small properties, Khadza Vinu Bahamshin, one so he sold both of these properties to the same person. He sold one for fifty zos and the Khad Bahamshin and the other property for fifty zos. Now again the same thing happens. Also Balchaiv, Tarful Khad Minay. So the Balchaiv that's owed a hundred zos came and collected one of these properties. Now Hadasavikatarav Lidoch. Now he comes back and he wants to collect the second one to have the full payment of the hundred zos that he's owed. 
So what does the buyer of these properties do? Shaka kuf zuzi, he took a hundred zuz, because of Lagabe, and he goes to this balchayv, he goes to the creditor, and he tells him, v'amalei, isha vilach kuf zuz l'chay. If the first property that you collected, you consider it to be that value of hundred zuz, so that's good, so you got the full payment. In other words, again, like I said before, he's saying that for me, it's worth a hundred zuz. So accept that as a full payment. V'iloi, if you don't consider it to be a full payment, Shokul kuv zuzi v'istalik here. I'm ready to pay you a hundred zuz. That's how valuable it is for me. And leave. And, and I, I want to keep it. So again, the question is, is he allowed to consider the value more to be considered to be a full payment? So of Yosef Lameim, instead of Yosef, thought to say, Haina mas nisin, this is what we learned in the Mishnah, Im Omri Yisayim Rim Chulu, as we quoted before, the Yisayim say, we want to consider the value of a father's properties to be more than the market value is. They can't do so. So over here as well, he cannot say to the creditor, consider the collection of this field to be double the amount. It doesn't have that amount. So he can, they have the right to go and collect the second property. Abayas, Abayas said, Me dummy, there's no comparison. Hossam Mislub said, Eliasmi. Over there, by, by bringing up the value, they're causing a loss to the other Yusaymim. Hocha might say this, like, over here, there's no loss. Mei Yov, Mei Shakal. He's paid 100, and he's getting back 100. No, Mei Yov means not paid, but they, they, they lent $100 or 100 Zuz, and they, he's offering to pay them 100 Zuz, so they're not losing anything. Now again, the Gemara says, When the buyer wants to go and get reimbursed from the seller, and we write a star for that, which is called a star tirfe, so for how much does he get reimbursed? Ravina says they get reimbursed the full amount of the loan that was paid up. So this is speaking about in a case when the creditor actually agreed to consider the, the, the collection of only 50 zoz field to be the full amount. So therefore, the buyer could collect 100. Ravavira says only half, only chamshin, which is the actual value of the field of what he paid for it. And the is only 50. It's not exactly clear why the Gemara repeats the exact same case. It's, it, it's just a difference in the, the uh, value, the number of a uh, thousand or a hundred. It's basically the same halacha. Okay, one more story over here. The Gemara says, Ahu zuzi. There was an individual that he owed a hundred zuz. Shachif, he passed away. Shavik Ketina Da'ara, he left a little property, the Havashav Chamshi Zuzin, that was worth only 50 Zuz. So this is like Javier, we're not speaking about any, we're speaking about inheritors. So the Yarshan, now Yarshan from their father, a property that's worth 50 Zuz. So also Bachayiv Katarafle. The Bachayiv came, the one he owes the money comes and he wants to collect his property. So the Yisraeli wanted to keep their father's property. So what do they do? Also Yasmi Yavale Chamshin Zuzi. So they paid him. They paid him 50 Zuz from out of their pocket cash. They paid him. But now the thing is, that's only payment of half of the loan. Now Hada Katarafle. So then this person that he owes money to came and now wants to collect his property for the rest that they're owed. Yeah, so now the question is, could he do so? Could he collect the rest? The, the Yerushim could say, listen, you came, when you came the first time to collect from this property, you actually had a lien on the property. So you, you, you had the right to collect it. But now we paid you off for that lien. That lien, we already paid you $500. So now the property became ours. It belongs now to the Yerushim. Now there's no lien on the property. When you come back a second time to collect the remainder of what you're owed, the 50 Zuz, there's no lien on the property anymore. So how can you collect again from this property? So Asla Kameda Abaya. Abaya came and uh, they came to Abaya and Abaya said the Yarshim are actually wrong. He could come a second time and collect from this property. Why is this? Amalan Abaya says, Mitzvah Ali Yisaimim Lefroya Chayvavian. There's a mitzvah besides the fact that there's a lien on the property. Even if you're not collecting from the actual property because of the lien, but the Yusayimim have a mitzvah to pay their father's loans. And as Rashi brings, the reason is because it's the covet for the father. Imagine a person passes away and he owes people money and the people are not getting paid up. People are going to always remember the father in a very negative light. This is a person that owed people money and he never paid up his loans. So therefore, it's a mitzvah for the children, for the covet of the father to pay up their loans. So therefore, it says Abaya, Hani kamoi mitzvah avdisu. When you pay this balchayv, the 50, the 50 zoz, that's not re- considered to be a payment in order to remove the lien from the property. You pay the chayv because you have a mitzvah. You, you have a mitzvah to the pay the chayv, that's it. So that you did your mitzvah. Now, hashtag kitarev bedin katarev. But the lien on the property actually remains. So now, when they come a second time to actually collect the property, now they have a lien from the property that they're collecting, and therefore they could collect. But 
Gemara explains this Psaktan of Abaye, it depends what was said when they paid the loan, when they paid the cash, the loan, the 50 Zuz. So this is only said, If when they paid the $50 cash, they didn't say clearly, we're paying this because of the lien on the property. So then we could say what Abayah said. The money that they paid is the mitzvah that they had to pay for the loan. It does not remove the lien from the property. But Avil Omru, if the Yisraelim clearly said, Lomrule, they said to him, Hani Khamshi Zuzi Domi Arikatini, we are paying this 50 Zuz to you in order to remove the lien from the property. So Saluki Salkua, so now they remove this person, now he doesn't have any lien from the property, so he will not be able to collect a second time from this property itself. It's not the lien is not there anymore.